In this video, we're gonna talk about destination weddings and specifically destination wedding invitations. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey of Design by Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer and I also teach people how to design wedding invitations. If you wanna become a wedding invitation designer, please check out some of our resources below and join our monthly membership stationary school just for wedding invitation designers. We like to think of it as the Netflix for invitation designers. But if you are planning a wedding, um, we have a whole wedding planning invitations playlist here on YouTube, so I hope you'll check it out. Now, if you're thinking about planning a destination wedding, there's one important distinction, which is what constitutes a destination <laughs> wedding. Um, I find that my clients think that any wedding in any destination is a destination wedding, and that's not necessarily true. So if more than 50% of the people have to get on a plane, to go to your wedding, it's considered a destination wedding. If they have to drive three hours down the road, it's not necessarily considered a destination wedding, even though people are still going to have to arrange accommodations, etc. Does this really matter in the scheme of things? No, if you wanna count your wedding as a destination wedding, go for it, whatever. Um, however, I'm gonna to talk to you about the differences in destination wedding invites that specifically come when 50% or more of your guests have to get on a plane and go somewhere. Of course, some of these things are exacerbated when they have to like get a visa or get out their passport and go to a completely different country. A lot of people think that the destination has to do with where it is. So if it's like on a beach somewhere, that's a destination wedding. Um, but it's more about the actual planning aspects and what everyone who's coming to your wedding has to do in order to get there. And that's where the invitations come in because they're so helpful from a functional perspective. They're the only communication that you really have with your guests. So you want to make sure you do it right. A lot of destination weddings, um, their invitations tend to be a little bit more involved. A few more pieces maybe. Um, you might wanna budget a little bit higher for invitations because they're serving more of a functional purpose, telling people about flights, telling people about accommodations, about other events that are included, et cetera. So that's something where um, it might end up costing you a little bit more just because you wanna include all the information to make the guest experience as smooth as possible. It's tempting to assume that you can include all this information on the website and you absolutely can and should, but not everyone's going to actually go on and read the website. I'm even guilty of this myself and I know how important the website is, but sometimes I forget to go on and read all the information and I still expect to get all the big major points um, in the invitation itself. So for your save the dates, um, most people say that save the dates should be a year to nine months out. I think this is still applicable for destination weddings, but I would go on the longer end of it, especially if someone has to go out of the country, fly into somewhere, um, go get a passport, et cetera. You wanna give them around a year to the point where they know that's happening so they can really arrange their travel plans. If you're doing a destination, like on the other side of the country, for instance, for most of your guests, then still giving them that nine months is really helpful. You don't need to go so far in advance, but giving them nine months to a year is really, really helpful and will make it easier for them to make plans. For non-destination weddings, some people send save the dates even like six months, and I would not do that. I would at least give them nine months, even if it's going to be in the same country, but they're gonna have to get on a plane. A really fun aspect of save the dates is that you can change the word save the date to like, pack your bags, meet us in France, see you in Spain, whatever you wanna do there. It's really fun uh, to play around with it and have a good time there and do something non-traditional. I would say it's extra important to put your wedding website on a save the date for a destination wedding. Even if it's not fully built out yet, people are gonna need that information. They're gonna need to know what airport they're going to. They're gonna need to know how long they're staying. Um, and if you are doing events that everyone is invited to outside of the wedding, you need to include that. So instead of just save our date for the wedding, you need it to be save our dates or save the weekend and give them all the dates that they're going to be expected to be at events so that they can travel accordingly. Typically we do uh, city state like San Diego, California on a save the date, but you'll want to do city country. So like Paris, France, um, if it's a city that's kind of maybe outside of Paris a little bit, but everyone's gonna be staying in Paris, stick with Paris. Um, it's easy to put on there where they're going to have to fly to if that's possible. Maybe it's a different location than your wedding's actually taking place, uh, but giving them the information of where they have to fly to is kind of that most important piece that they need to know. Now, when it comes to invites, some people think they wanna send invites like nine months early for a destination wedding. That is the point of save the dates. I don't recommend sending invites that early because people aren't going to make their travel plans like that day. They're going to forget about it. They're gonna lose the invitation. They're gonna to forget to RSVP, etc. So you need to send something that is more along the traditional time frame of when they're actually going to be booking flights and actually RSVPing and nailing down their travel plans. If you send a save the date, 
that is all you need to worry about for a while. Um, unless something major has changed that you need to work, uh, that you need to work out with them. You don't really need to send your invitations much earlier. I do recommend sending them a little bit earlier than your typical time frame. So we typically say like eight to 12 weeks, uh, for destination weddings, you might want to go like on the 12 side of that. Um, and with COVID and pandemic and everything, the post office has been a little bit slower. So whereas I typically would go with eight weeks for normal invitations, um, I'm now going like 10 to 12 for normal inv invitations and I might go like 12 to 14 for destination weddings. Um, but if it's like on the other side of the country, I think people are used to traveling for weddings and so it's not as big of a deal. Whereas if it's like a foreign uh, destination, then you might want to aim like 12 to 14 weeks. Details cards are common in all weddings, but they're especially port important for a destination wedding because people need to know what uh, airports to fly into, if they're going to need to rent a car, what transportation is provided, and then any accommodation information. If uh, you have a destination wedding, it's more important to spell these things out on the actual cards because you can't rely on everyone reading the website thoroughly. Uh, whereas if you have a non-destination wedding, it's a little bit easier to just throw that information on the website for anyone who needs it. Um, but anything that's important, like if you have to, um, I'm going to a wedding that's in Key Largo and I thought that flying into Key West would be the fastest, but I learned on their invitations that flying into Miami was actually a lot closer. That's something I didn't know. And it was really helpful that that was spelled out because I might've booked my flight to somewhere two hours away instead of just an hour away. Most destination weddings involve additional events than the wedding, like a welcome reception the night before, a brunch the next day, et cetera. So having a schedule of events is really helpful to letting the guests know like at what time they can plan to leave. If you have a brunch the next day, maybe they book their flight at 10 a.m. and they're gonna have to leave before that. But if you told them you have a brunch until two, they'll make sure to book their travel accordingly. And in general, because you're sending the invitations a little bit earlier, you want your reply date to be a little bit earlier as well. Typically I want that a month out from the wedding, but with a destination wedding, you might want it six to eight weeks out. Um, so sending them a little earlier, you still wanna give the guests about a month with the invitations in which to reply. Lastly, of course, there's so many fun things you can do with wedding invitations that are for destination weddings. So uh, for instance, for Italian weddings, we often do a villa painting or a map that's included. Um, I have a bunch of examples on my corresponding blog post, which I'll link in the description of this video, but it's so fun to incorporate elements of the day in your favors. Like I do a lot of Italian wedding invitations. We'll do little favor tags for a limoncello or we'll wax seal an olive branch to the wedding invitations. Um, just little things like that can pull in the culture of the place that you're visiting. And I think it's really nice to provide some of those extra touches to your guests. You can also do things like on your welcome packets, if you're providing those, you can give them examples of places to visit in the area, things they might wanna do when they're in town, because a lot of guests are going to make this a vacation in addition to coming for your wedding. And they'll want to know some of those fun tourist attractions or local restaurants that they can go to while they're there. So overall, I think destination weddings are really fun. I was going to have one myself until COVID canceled it, unfortunately. I also love making destination wedding invitations. So um, I hope you'll check out some of the other wedding planning and invitation tips that we have on uh, this channel, as well as on our blog, if you wanna see some examples of our favorite destination wedding invitations. Thanks everybody.